The next one for Orleans games lovers is Cathedral of Orleans. Plays cooperatively, plays two to four players, and this is the family level cooperative Orleans game. Yes, this is uh, another in the series. It's got a similar feel. Uh, it's got a, it does have a much simpler feel, and we'll see this as we get into the video. Yep. And hi, I'm Stella, and this is Taryn from Maple University. Today we are going to do a, an overview and then review of the Cathedral of Olons, where we are cooperatively building the 3D Cathedral of Olons. Yes. So let's go straight down onto the table and have a look. So lots of uh, lots of familiar things here, a map with all sorts of resources on paths and all these little circular workers and bags. bags. There are two. There are two bags. There's a red bag and there's a blue bag. And the aim here is to get eight cathedrals in three rounds. So these are the cathedral pieces here. They could have just had a little track that like you moved eight steps up on, but this is way more cool. As you get cathedral <laughs> yes. pieces, you get to start uh, slotting them together and you'll end up with a three-dimensional structure. It's very cool. How you do that is by triggering effects which give you cathedrals and they come by fulfilling orders with resources here, by fulfilling orders with resources which come out once per round. Uh, and by fulfilling blueprints. As you flip these blueprints over, you get them for various things. Some of those, but not all of them, will also have cathedral steps. Every turn, you will choose one of the two bags and take a single worker from it. So this is, this gone is the taking eight workers or six workers and, and combining them into lots of things. You simply take one worker and put it onto any matching coloured space, regardless of which bag you took it out of. And then you do the action that's there. Uh, and a big part of the puzzle of the game is you don't know what order the tokens are going to come out of the bags. You need to be careful to leave enough open spaces for the tiles that you might draw, because as soon as you are stuck in a position where this is the only place remaining that you can put a tile, it ends the round. So there's a bit of uh, risk to manage there. The actions are pretty simple. You can move on land or move on water, just like in uh, all classic prior Orleanses, and you get the uh, resource that you cover and it goes into your knapsack. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this whole row lets you deliver stuff to orders. So you can either be in a location with one of these corner ones and deliver to there, or you can deliver up to here, or you can give to other players. Uh, you can gain and then spend glass rosettes with your monks that will directly get you blueprints. You can open up these orders as well. There are some immediate benefits in here or there are some uh, orders which might give you blueprints. And you basically go through all of these actions. Picking up bonuses, you'll get some more monks across the course of the game as you get certain bonuses. Uh, and it all ends up being this mad rush to try to get eight cathedral steps in three mm -hmm. rounds. At the end of each round, you lose whichever piece ends the round, and these go back into... This is where the colours of the bags matter. They'll go back into the colour based on the side of the town they're on. So across the course of the game, you can start to, with these spaces, skew more black tiles to one side than mm. the other, the reds and the blues will start to get mingled and it becomes harder to predict what's going to come out of each bag. So we've played many games of Orlons from Orlons Invasion, the cooperative game which is a lot harder than this one I think. Yeah, that's the cheese throwing the game. The cheese throwing game. The cheese throwing <laughs> box, there's many scenarios in yes. there. And then there's Joan of Arc, which is the roll and write Orlons, mm -hmm. and the main one, and then there's the scenario based as well. Yep, there was also stories. Sorry, uh, sorry, which sorry. Came based, out yep. the other year. Mm -hmm. um, so there's yeah, many. there's a lot out there in the world of uh, in the world of this game. Yeah, so this is actually aimed for family level players. So yes. which I think suits family level. It's not as hard as Invasion. Yep. No, it's much uh, <laughs> much more straightforward than Invasion. Invasion's a really tight cooperative scenario. Great. This one, and it does say family on the box as well. Um, you know, it, it's very much targeted in that way. Mm -hmm. And simple actions, uh, simple risk balancing between the two yes. bags uh, without it being trivial. Yeah, I like it. 
there's some balance but it's only slightly balanced at the end of the round where you put uh, or grab all the tiles from the same side to the particular bag that's I guess that's slightly need to make sure that you put everything in balance now there's one thing that I think is a little bit different than other all on is quite significant and I don't know if I like it or not which is memory so as part of mechanic is memory you cannot look at the bag I think that might be in some of the others I'm or not maybe sure it is, if they yes. state it um, strictly in there but it does yeah certainly tell you not to look in the bags yeah so in this one it's quite critical when you're trying to decide okay which bag you're gonna get the tiles from and you can't remember oh, I have bad memory obviously so I'm relying heavily on Tarrant when we play this with Tarrant to remember roughly which one so we gaining monks as well which is the wild tile and okay how many monks is that in there I mean you know I wouldn't remember that after two turns <laughs> you probably remember it yeah, but it, it does make for, I mean, it makes for those interesting decisions as well. You can try to yeah. load all your monks into one side so that you have a better chance of drawing them, mm. but it does mean you're going to eat up, say, colours that will accommodate the red knights. And then yep. if you do happen to draw those out instead, you're going to be stuck ending the round early. Yeah, there's a bit of a things like light strategies going on in here. And building the cathedral, I mean, it's not that hard. It's, I think it's quite fun. It's not that yeah. hard. I'll do it while you talk. <laughs> All right. It's just a high stake for you. So this is made from cardboard pieces. I don't know how long it will last. Hopefully it will last quite a while. It's not plastic or anything like that. So as long as you're gentle about it, I think it'll be fine. And at the back of it, there is the number of what it actually goes on. And then on the other side, it says this slot number eight, for example, for the roof. Let's see how, how long. Any one time, Tarrant, doing a building the cathedral? I'm sure you've put a timer on superimposed. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I will. And wrong not wrong way. And there you go. Voila. It's our cathedral. Oh, no, not, not quite. There we go. Now, you can't really move it because, I mean, it's good that it's not really tightly uh, fit because if it's tightly fit and then you have to dis dis disassemble it and then we're probably going to damage it more but there you go that's cathedral <coughs> of all yep what i would say is overall i think this is i don't think there is anything much in this game for you know frequent hobby gamers it does play very quick mm -hmm. um the decision space is not huge I think it is best suited and probably only suited to the family target which it is which is stated on the box. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a it is a really nice it's a nice decision space for that area. I think so. I can imagine kids playing with their parents where they just drawing the thing while the parents just keep explaining the rules of the game to them and then they can build the cathedral when they found it, they can pick so there are things that kids can do. Yeah. Uh, and it's naturally going to be a very tight game, which yes. the cheese throwing one was very tight. It was like the right length as well. You're never going to finish this in the two rounds. first two rounds. Yeah. And you can also be quite a long way behind, but still be far enough advanced to really reel off a lot of cathedral pieces in the final round. Yeah, that's what happened in one of our games. We're like, oh no, we're not going to win. What's going on? It's, it's so far behind, but then in the last round, uh, and just flip more cathedral pieces because these pieces is like, look, there's most of them are cathedral, but then remember we kept drawing the ones that is not cathedral. I was like, what's what's going on here? Yes, we got a lot of monks, <laughs> and then we use them to get our cathedrals. Yeah, that's true. So fun game uh, if you like Orleans. You probably want to introduce newcomers or gateways as a gateway games to all ones mechanic then this is probably a good one and it's cooperative so you can help them more how to play the game before introducing them to the actual all ones yeah. so question is now what is your favorite all ones games we're gonna share you as well what's our favorite all ones game uh, if you've enjoyed this video if you can please hit the like button and comments what's your favorite all ones they'll be really helpful what's your favorite all ones games Taren? I do really like the uh, uh, the invasion co-op mode. Mm -hmm. 
I think, with all the information that's out there, because Orleans was always a game, because you could build almost any building from the start. Um, that's always an information overload thing yeah. for me. And I like in the in that cooperative version, you know, that's sitting there and you can really, you can plan everything around it. So, mm. and it, it's always been very tight when we've played that. Yeah. Funnily enough, my favorite Orlons also Orlons Invasion before the original Orlons. And then the Invasion came chance, not because of the cheese, but because what Taryn said is a really tight cooperative game. Now, I usually like cooperative game, but lately it hasn't been so much. I like cooperative game where you can make your own decision, where no other players can make the decisions for you. For example, Hanabi is a great cooperative game because there's no way that player that's holding the cards know what cards it is. So they're relying upon other players to help them. The crew, no one knows what cards you have on your hands. So I, I am trying to kind of like stealing away a little bit from cooperative game that's things like maybe Pandemic, for example, although I, I still play it, but I'll be really selective on who I'm going to play with. Now, All On's Invasion is also one that you can't really control. You can't really control what things you draw, you can't really control what are you going to, what space you're going to place your tokens tokens are. And because it's such a tight game, so the, and then there's a lot of information that no one, not one player can control everything. Um, I find it also for more complex games, cooperative games, maybe one player out of the three, for example, they don't know the rules that much. Hence, they keep other people telling them what to do. And that's, I'm like, I don't know if I like that, but then if that person's asking for help, then that's a different story. So if you're asking for help, then like, like Taryn, you, you're really good at rules sometimes, like on or decisions. Like we played cooperatively uh, a logic puzzle deduction, for example. Like, I don't know what to do, so what do you think? And then we discuss it openly, but then ultimately it's um, your decision at the end of the game. But anyways, <laughs> I'm saying All Ones Invasion is my favorite. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.